What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna put to the test the 2024 Audi RS3 with the 2024 BMW M340i. We've had so many comments in the last month ever since we bought the RS3, how they compare to the M340. We film a lot of these cars and a lot of you seem to be cross shopping these two cars. Now, our car was $65,000. This car is $64,000. So they are the exact same price point depending on how you spec them as far as options go. They're both all wheel drive German sedans with about 400 horsepower. So let's get right into see how these compare and contrast as far as $65,000 performance sedans. So let's take a look at what is gonna power each of these two cars. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Audi RS3, you're gonna find a 2.5 liter inline five cylinder turbocharged engine with 401 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, quattro all-wheel drive system, and it has been tested zero to 60 in about 3.3 seconds, topping out around 155 miles per hour. Now, underneath the hood of the BMW 340i, you're gonna find the inline three-liter turbocharged six-cylinder motor. This one pumps out 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque has a torque converter, eight speed automatic transmission, X drive, all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. And then zero to 60 for X drive is about 3.7 seconds. Now, when you look at curb weight, the BMW M340 is about 3,900 pounds. RS3 is about 3,600 pounds. Also wheelbase, you're looking at 112 inches versus 103 inches. Moving on to exterior styling, purely subjective. I think both cars look fantastic for the way they're designed. Audi RS3 looks like a sporty, compact Audi. Massive grill up front, nice LED headlights. BMW, as expected, kidney-shaped grills. Looks like a BMW performance car. You do have six-piston brake calipers on the RS3, four-piston up front on the M340i. Similar side profiles, you can definitely tell the 3 Series is a little bit bigger than Audi's 3 Series. Looking at the overall side profile along with the rear, again, can't complain, it's a great looking car. RS3, same sort of deal from back and side. So purely subjective, whichever one you think is nicer. Now let's move on to the interior with the Audi RS3. Very sporty looking in here. You're gonna see Nappa leather along the seats, single piece backs. Of course, we have nice contrast stitching on this particular spec. Alcantara on the door panels, matte carbon fiber. More traditional with an infotainment screen as well as a center screen. This one does have really cool configurations. You also have a virtual cockpit. And then depending on drive mode, you can really make this car look super cool with all of the gauge cluster customizations. So definitely a nice setup. It's easy to use. Really can't complain at all. You have more of a square shape for the dashboard. And then Audi's infotainment, super easy to use. Really can't complain either way. You also have cool screens you're able to pop up on here. You can view some of the performance things. Climate controls are down here. Navigation on the center screen as well. Small shifter, storage, two cup holders, space down here. And definitely a nice place to be. And then moving on to the BMW M340i, a lot more conservative feeling on the interior. You're gonna see synthetic leather, less sporty seats, more traditional style seating, I would say. Then you have a little bit different use of materials. You have the one massive curve LCD display. You can see we have a configurable screen a little bit. You have different drive modes like you saw in the Audi. So you can configure that with a big tack, just changing things up a little bit. And then for the center infotainment screen, BMWs has all your climate right here on the screen. You can see all that pops up. Home icon up here. You have navigation, of course. A little bit different design with these massive tiles that come across. You can get cool displays like you saw in the Audi as well. Different apps. So pretty conservative, but kind of cool with that massive screen. A little bit more conservative steering wheel as well. Typical controls, paddle shifters on both cars. So sitting now in the back seat with the Audi RS3, like I mentioned, this is a smaller car. At five foot 11 though, I sit here with about an inch of headroom. My knees do have some space, same with my feet. Good recline back here. Honestly, not bad for a more compact car. Your head can barely touch over here if you lean too far to the left. Good glass and everything. Amenities, you're gonna see we have an armrest as well as cup holders down in the center. There's also climate controls right down here. Two USBs, storage, and then good sized door pockets, LED lights, as well as grab handles and hooks. So overall for its size, it doesn't really feel cramped. Not too bad back here. 
And then now hopping into the M340i, you can definitely tell this is a much larger car. I have maybe two or three inches of headroom now. And with the driver's seat at my height, once again, two or three inches of knee room. So that is a big difference. The seat is also a little bit lower. So I feel like I'm sitting more into the seat. Definitely a much more comfortable back end, bigger glass. You're still gonna see some nice amenities. So you can pull this down. We have cup holders and an armrest, and you're still gonna get climate control vents, different USB plugs as well. Big cup holders in the door panels, LED dome lights, you got your grab panels up above as well. So biggest thing, if you truly are using this for backseat passengers, that's something to consider. The three series is certainly a larger car. And then moving on to trunk storage space, certainly more room in the three series, a little bit deeper load floor, pretty large in here. You do have handles to lower the second row seats as well. Moving into the Audi, a little bit taller load floor, however, still pretty darn roomy. The only way to fold down the second row seats is to be back there and pull the latches. So definitely, once again, the back end, you can tell the three series has a little bit extra size. <laughs> so we are setting off now in the bmw m340i just get my bearings with this car just a little bit so we have the inline six cylinder a little bit more weight to the car and a significantly different transmission Healthy motor, I mean, this car gets up to speed super nicely. Right now we're in the sport mode. Right off the bat already I can tell it's not really that hardcore of a car. This doesn't really feel like a race car performance machine. You know, it's certainly no BMW M3. The M3 is an insane car, super high performance. This one doesn't really give you that feeling in the sport mode. I know a lot of people ask about these M Sport BMWs. They're not backbreaking. They're perfectly fine dailies. This is plenty comfortable for just a normal, luxurious car. So that's what I'm finding already. If I go into Eco Pro, tone the whole car down, automatic now. It's a nice luxury car, kind of what you would expect. It's comfortable, it's roomy, great visibility all around. The technology works fine too. You know, you have the climate controls like that. So it's easy to use, easy to see. It really feels like a nice, normal luxury car, but given it has the B58 engine with a mild hybrid system, which is actually kind of cool, you know, you're talking still pretty good power, smooth power delivery. It's also really smooth around town in the normal drive mode. The torque converter ZF eight speed automatic is super smooth. You don't feel anything weird. It's just a nice, normal, easy to drive car, I would say. So, so far I'm getting very normal vibes from this car. If you want a nice normal three series, you know, a German luxury car, you know, this is something to get. And this is the person who you want some extra power. You want something that you can have fun with, get on it and actually accelerate. And with the 340, you're getting that from that engine and the transmission. Going back into sport mode, manual mode and everything. very smooth power delivery from the engine and the ZF is really quick as well. So now obviously I already have a lot of seat time in the RS3 and I've driven quite a few of these M340s. I am finding there's excitement to this car but there's nothing above and beyond with the excitement level and we'll talk more about that when we hop in the RS3 but this certainly has a lot of normal characteristics. Handling wise I like the steering feel it's nice and weighted it's got some heaviness to it I think BMW has always done a good job with their steering. It just feels like it's really uh, mechanical, but at the same time, it's easy to drive, it's easy to steer. But you have a good amount of weight to give you a little of that driver feedback. And you can tell like the sizing of the car it doesn't feel compact or cramped. It feels like a roomy open sedan. And then one last acceleration, getting up and going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got well-rounded characteristics. Well-rounded, it can do it all. It's comfortable, roomy. And like I said, the excitement level, I think that's gonna be the thing we're gonna find in the RS3. I think that's gonna be the differences of why you would pick the RS3 over this. This does have a more grown-up feeling, I would say. In this, I just feel like I'm in kind of a upscale luxury car that happens to have some performance to it with a powerful motor, good brakes, good steering, all that stuff. So that's what I'm finding so far with the M340. Let's get into that RS3. All 
I try not to drive this any harder than I was on the M340 since I own it, I can do whatever I want in it. <laughs> but already, so I'm in the RS performance mode. This has a lot more drive modes. This basically, you totally drive select. You have comfort, auto, and dynamic, which is basically the equivalent to the BMW Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. This, however, you tap the RS icon, you can go into customized drive modes. So RS performance mode, I have that set up to where everything is in the most performance setting. So already you can tell there is more of that performance in here. And like I mentioned with the BMW M3, already I'm getting baby M3 vibes. I built one in xDrive and it comes to about 90 something thousand dollars. So a good $25,000, $30,000 more expensive than both of these cars. So already I'm getting performance in this car to where this feels like a little race car. hear the turbo noise the dual clutch transmission feels very mechanical in the slow speeds around town if i toggle this back into comfort mode automatic and everything you can kind of feel the transmission it's a little clunky in slow speeds which i personally like it reminds me of my old r35 nissan gtr so it has that mechanical feeling to where it kind of gives you that driver feedback of driving in a race car almost so i'm already getting that sort of thing as we tone it down and everything, you can tell it's a little bit smaller of a car. These seats are honestly a step up from the M340 being the Napa leather versus the fake leather. And the single piece backs make this feel like a more hunkered down performance car. You got the leather on the steering wheel. This feels more driver focused. It just feels more like that. And when I mentioned excitement levels in the M340, this definitely has more excitement, more drama, and a more fun factor. But in the comfort mode, this still is really refined. And something that I was actually impressed with when we bought this, this rides really comfortable, really quiet, really smooth, just as refined as the M340. So both cars have that aspect. I think the biggest thing is gonna be the size. The M340 is a bigger car, there's more space, more room. So it's just a physically bigger car for that thing. And it is smoother around town. This car, slow speeds, the dual clutch is a little clunky. You gotta let the clutches engage when you do you know, drive to reverse, things like that. So there are some sacrifices with an RS3, given it's much more performance focused. But nonetheless, you're still getting a luxury car at the end of the day, which is quite nice. And then we can toggle into the sport modes and everything. Go back to RS performance. This makes a lot, this makes a lot more aggression, a lot more sounds to it. Man, yeah, this is definitely, you can definitely tell this is on edge. This keeps you on your toes. This is a performance car. This has what an M3 has, but it's toned down in size and price point and 100 less horsepower. So I think if you're looking for an M3, I would love to buy an M3. It's one of my favorite cars, especially when you're looking at performance sedans. However, I can't quite justify spending $90,000 on a sedan right now. You know, this at 65 was way more in our budget and just made a lot of sense. But I like excitement. I want something that's fast, fun, and raw. Yeah, and the RS3 gives you a lot of that excitement. I think with the M340, it's toned down a lot to where that's more of a car where you want a nice sedan, a nice comfortable car, but you don't want it to be underpowered. You want a proper engine instead of a four cylinder. You get the M340 because you're gonna get power, plenty of power. I mean, it's a fast car. The B58 is an amazing motor and you have a smoother transmission and it, it tones down the performance, but it ups it in the size space and just usability, I would say, given it's a little bit easier to drive. You don't really have to think about the transmission at all. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm filming this because I've seen a lot of comments saying these are not competitors, given they are very different, regardless that they are the same price point. And I hear you guys on that, this really, the RS3 is kind of a niche market to where it doesn't honestly truly have a direct competitor. The only best competitor I would say to this car is the M3, which of course is the next step up in price, size, and performance. So if you want an M3, but a much more affordable M3, go for the RS3. If you're looking for the M340i, I think you're looking for a car that's a little bit more toned down in performance. You don't need the fastest race car out there. You're looking for a properly powered, good handling, fun luxury car. 
and you're not looking for that M3 performance and feeling. And that's the biggest thing that is gonna differentiate the M340 to the RS3. You get all the performance feeling, the drama, the excitement levels. And I'm not even really pushing this car just yet. We only have 450 miles on it so far, but already kind of babying this like I am the new car that we're filming. There's so much more excitement and character to the RS3 where, and I, I love the M340, however, <laughs> It does feel a little dull when you drive it back to back to this. So if you're in the market for a $65,000 sedan, these both can do the same things. You can fit people in the back, stuff in the back, they're comfortable on the highway. But if you want that extra excitement of, wow, I'm in a performance car that could obliterate the track and truly is performance first, comfort still there, but comfort second, you want this. If you're looking for, I want a comfortable, nice, normal, roomy, luxury car, but I want it to also have a performance side, get the M340 because it's got more space, it's got all that, but it's got a good performance side. This car performance is first, and it really does pack a lot of fun factor, still giving you a pretty refined car at the end of the day. So after driving the RS3 back to back with the M340i, it's really cool to compare these cars for sure. Are they direct competitors? Not really. Yes, they're both all-wheel drive German sedans with a unique inline turbo engine, making similar power, similar price points. I think the biggest thing, the RS3 has a huge level of excitement over the M340. It handles more tight, more nimble. It feels more like a race car on the roads. It's a very exciting car. It's pretty awesome you know my wife and i we don't need the biggest space our goal with the rs3 was to have the back seat space in case we need it not necessarily going to use it all the time we've never had anyone in the back probably won't for quite some time the m340 is a little bit more mature a little bit more roomy car so if you're looking for space and comfort you know the m340 is a good way to go the excitement level is definitely a lot less and not to say this isn't a fun car it really is a fun car but that is like an M3, just a lot more affordable. So if you're looking for a cool sedan, M340 is a great way to go. If you want the size to be, kind of size and space is your number one pick. But about the extra excitement, extra fun factor, the back seats are just there in case, go for the RS3. So there you guys go, comparing the M340 to the new RS3. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more content, and I'll see you all in the next video. Yeah.